if you are pregnant, trying to get pregnant, uh, these are some of the herbs that you should avoid because you could unintentionally abort your child. You definitely don't want to do that. If you're interested, keep watching, friends. Hey, friends. Welcome. Welcome back to Essence of Earth. I'm your hostess with the mostess, Miss Nikita. And y'all know over here, we're going to focus on everything that's going to help you improve the quality of your life. So if you like stuff like that, I want to give you a moment of silence to subscribe. Thank you, Lord. And click the notification bell <laughs> so you'll be notified every time you post, every time I post, <laughs> what the heck, <laughs> every time I post and that is every week. Okay. So you get notifications every week. Who wouldn't want that for me? But anyways, if you're here, if you're still here, we're going to talk about herbs that can cause abortions. Um, and I was kind of reluctant to talk about this in the wake of, you know, like Roe v. Wade and all of that. And then I don't want people to think like, oh, she's telling people, you know, how to have abortions. But this is how this came about. OK, <laughs> this is the truth. OK, this is the God's honest truth. Um, I was reading this book. OK, and in this book, you know, I, was, I, I won't say I was reading it. I was looking up different herbs because this is a book that kind of tells you about certain herbs and how uh, different countries use them, right? And then it also breaks down the chemical constituents of the herb and what it helps with and um, some of the, the tests that have been run uh, on these herbs. It's, it's very cumbersome, okay? So uh, I was going through and I came across hibiscus, right? I was like, oh, I love hibiscus. So, you know, it, it was interesting. I love the taste of hibiscus. I drink it all the time. And then I'm reading it and like every country that it's mentioning, every country that it mentions pretty much said that they used um, hibiscus <laughs> as a abortive fashion. I think that's how you say it, abortive fashion, yeah which is something that causes abortions. And I was like, no way. <laughs> like, ha, like you get so caught up on just hearing some of those common benefits from herbs that you don't really think to really look deeper into the herb to see, you know, how it's commonly used, not just here in the United States, but in, you know, different countries. So I was, shocked nonetheless and now i tell everybody about that especially people you know um who are trying to get pregnant or people who are pregnant um now don't get me wrong the herbs that i'm going to list here in the event that you you may have some reproductive issues right and um you you go through periods where you're not getting a cycle this could be these could be herbs that you could use to bring on a cycle right if if you're not having them but the a lot of these herbs they really stimulate the uterus um and could could cause an abortion if you are pregnant and you know dosage matters okay the, <laughs> the dosage that you're taking matters but i know hibiscus is something that i drink or i was drinking at the time all the time and luckily i'm <laughs> i have one child and i don't want any more so i was like i'm not gonna stop drinking hibiscus in the, in the amounts that i was because i absolutely love hibiscus so but i just thought it was so interesting to to find out how other uh people or countries use the same herbs that you pretty much love. Now, some of these may not be so common, but you never know. You get these herbal concoctions and uh, they're mixed with stuff and you, you don't really know, right? You don't know all of the benefits because when you take a herb, it's not just one or two things that it does, right? <laughs> it's not just one or two things. There are several things that herbs could be doing once you once you consume them. So it's important to really know what it is that you're taking and how it can affect you. Now, like I said, the first one is hibiscus. Okay, friend, hibiscus. I love it. Hibiscus. I love it. Now, the, the next one is pennyroyal. Okay. 
Now, uh, this herb has been traditionally used for menstrual regulation. So if you're the type of person that, um, whose cycle is just irregular or, or it lasts a long time, this could really help you um, regulate your cycle. And like I said, it is a uterine stimulant in which most of these herbs are, but this one specifically, it can be toxic. So you definitely want to be careful if you're getting like these teas, reproductive teas that you're buying from people, especially on social media, because you don't know how much is in it. You don't know how it's going to affect you. So just be careful. Okay. Cause penny royal can be toxic. Now there's Dung Kwai. Uh, or Don Quay. And this is another uh, popular traditional Chinese herb. Um, and this does promote blood flow. Um, and like I stated earlier, um, in, in the cases where you're not getting a cycle, right? And maybe you are trying to get pregnant or whatever, but you know, your cycle isn't coming. This is an herb that you could probably take that could bring on a cycle to help you, you know, get pregnant. So just keep that in mind. Um, but again, <laughs> if you are pregnant, uh, this is something that you, you don't want to take, especially in large doses. Okay. Now there's blue cohosh. Now I know y'all have heard, no, not blue cohosh. This is black cohosh. I want to talk about that one first because this is a herb that um, typically people use when they're going through menopause. I have a con I made a concoction uh, for my mom. Um, she actually doesn't. I just be telling my all my mama business. Dang. I'm sorry, mom. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but I made this for my mom. She absolutely loves it. You know, the, it calms down the hot flashes and so many other things. Um, so that's, that's black cohosh. But this one does stimulate the uterus um, and could cause an abortion. So just be be careful. Uh, and then there's, there's black cohosh and then there's blue cohosh. Uh, and the blue cohosh kind of does the same thing. Um, not so much with the uh, menopause as a black cohosh, but it still does its thing. Now, sage. Sage in large large amounts um, can, can bring on uterine contractions, okay? Uh, culinary amounts are safe. Okay, so don't be thinking that <laughs> somebody, you know, people are always spark sprinkling that parsley at the end just to make it pretty. Don't worry, you're not going to lose a baby for that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then there's mugwort, and mugwort is known for its ability to stimulate the menstrual cycle as well. Uh, we talked about the parsley. Now, check this one when you're using people who are using aloe vera internally. Now that's a common one. Like you may not have known that friend. You may not have known that, okay? Uh, but uh, aloe vera, um, to topical use is great, um, but internal consumption in large amounts can stimulate the uterus and should be avoided by pregnant women. Now in the book, another thing that I, another one that I saw that I actually love tamarind um, but it was, I can't remember which country, uh, uses it, but the way that they prepared it, um, could cause an abortion as well. And that's tamarind, like the little cute little fruit thingies that is really good for digestion and your gut health. Yes. And I call, I call tamarind nature snacks because it just tastes so good. It's like my mouth is watering thinking about it because is so sweet and tangy. I love it. Uh, but just keep in mind, you know, some of these other risks involved with taking certain things. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. Um, I do feel like I need to say I'm not your doctor. So if you decide to take these to get rid of children or babies, please do this at your own risk and be careful. I always consult your consult your doctors. Okay, I'm 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 just a lover of education and learning about herbs and the body. And I stumbled upon hibiscus and how other countries use it. And I felt like, you know, this is something that should be shared and people should be aware uh, because you could be using these herbs and like aloe vera and hibiscus uh, and parsley and, and stuff like that and tamarind, 
you know, like it's, you just, you just knowing, uh, is so much better being in the know. So, um, I hope this has blessed you in some kind of way and be careful, be careful out here or not. It's up to you, <laughs> but I shared it as I learned, I share. And until next time, bye.